Well, hi there. Welcome to Alpha Male 2.0. I am Caleb Jones. Lifestyle design, freedom-focused lifestyle design for men. Location-dependent income through a location-dependent business. Dating multiple women all at the same time, long-term, with no lying, cheating, or drama, or bullshit. The freest lifestyle a man can live. If you watch the video version of this, you can probably tell I have a new setup here. So uh, if there are any technical hiccups today, I apologize. If you guys who are live could let me know that uh, if you could put a two on in the chat, if you can both see me and hear me, that'd be awesome. Also, let me know if whether or not I look too dark, if the video is too dark or too bright or just right. That would also be helpful. Okay, cool. I see some twos. Great. All right, cool. All right, hang on a second. Get situated over here. All right. <clears throat> Cool beans. All right. Awesome. All right. Hang on a second. I'm going to get one more thing set up here to look over here. Okay. 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 I should change my screen setup for this. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Yeah. Tell me if, uh, if it looks too dark or too, too. Yeah. Tell me if it looks too dark or too bright. Um, <clears throat> we're going to start with our topic in a few minutes while people are filing in really quick. I watched a uh, clip of a podcast. It was a podcast. I think it was a podcast and it was of a certain individual named Bobby Lee. If you follow comedians, you know, who Bobby Lee is, he is really, really funny. <clears throat> he's this little Asian guy. He's hilarious. He's awesome. And he's been famous since the nineties. He's my age. He's 52. Uh, I'm almost 52. And uh, he's been famous for, what, 25 years or longer? 30 years? Damn near? Long time. And he's part of various comedian podcasts and things like that. <clears throat> the little hot Asian guy had a really hot girlfriend. Yes, that is what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Your background is dark, so it's going to look dark, so it looks good. Okay, cool. <clears throat> um. Anyway, uh he was talking about his ex-girlfriend. He dated this hot chick for a while. They broke up. They're still friends. And they were talking. And a third party asked the two of them, do you ever see yourselves getting back together? And of course, being a man, he said, oh, yeah. And so <laughs> uh, hilarious. Um, he said something that I thought was very interesting. He said, he said two things, actually. First thing he said was, what I want to do, partially joking, what he said was, what I want to do is, and apparently they had talked about this before, I want to have sex with 100 women. And once I have sex with 100 women, then I can start, then I can settle down with you, which, by the way, is a very common false belief. You'll see it with a lot of alpha male 1.0 type player guys. Well, if I fuck a lot of girls, then I'll settle down and be monogamous. And no, as I've debunked many times in my blogs and videos over many years, if you're accustomed to having sex with that many women, you have now wired yourself for sexual variety. You're never going to be monogamous. If you try to be monogamous, you will either break up or you're more likely you will cheat. So that's a terrible, terrible idea. Anyway, as soon as he said that, why well, need to fuck 100 girls first? My first thought was shock. I'm like, wait a minute. You're Bobby Lee. You're a world-famous comedian. You've been famous for 30 years. And you're and not only a famous, famous and been famous 30 years as a comedian. You haven't had sex with 100 women yet? Really? Because in the world of famous men, 100 women isn't a lot. Now, to normal humans, to normal men, oh, my God, 100 girls. In a world of players and or celebrities and shit like that, 100 is nothing. I'm definitely past my num that number myself. And I have been an Alpha 2.0 half the time that Bobby Lee has been world famous. So I'm like, really? You haven't been with a hundred? What? What the hell? That makes no sense. Um, <clears throat> what the fuck? So uh, that was my first thought. I was very surprised. I Means been famous for thirty years, dude. Hundred should be a slam dunk. Anyway, so then he goes on, and they're saying, "Well, how many women have you been? How far are you?" <clears throat> and he said, uh, "If you know Bobby Lee, he's very open and honest." about his personal life. He gets into detail and sometimes, you know, explicit detail. 
And uh, <laughs> he said, uh, he said, I've been with eight. And I'm like, what? Eight women? Eight? That's it? What? What? That's like, that's like beta male level shit. Eight girls in your whole life and you've been famous for 30 years. Fascinating. So again, it's one of these scenarios where when you live a certain lifestyle, you, you start taking your lifestyle for granted and then you become shocked at people who are way off from that lifestyle, especially people you would expect to have bigger numbers than eight. And he wasn't making a joke. It was eight. He was being serious. Okay. <laughs> I mean, eight is not a difficult number to get exceed eight women in your whole life by the time you're in your 50s. That's not a difficult goal to exceed, even if you're kind of a beta. I mean, even guys who are kind of beta have been with eight or more than eight, a little more than eight, not a lot, but more than eight. And a lot of men have been with far less than eight. That's also true to him. Not, and by the way, if you've been with three, four, five women in your life, I'm not here to disparage you. That's the lifestyle you're living. Uh, I've been non-monogamous for 17 years, so my numbers are kind of up there, which you would imagine they would be if you live non-monogamously straight for 17 years. I've lived non-monogamously for 17 years straight with no dry spells and no monogamy for 17 years, literally. Um, this is my 17th year anniversary as an alpha male 2.0 this, this month. I believe that's the correct math. So 2007, uh, 2024, is that 17 years? You guys in the chat, correct my math. Is that 17 years? I think so, right? So, I mean, it's not because I, I haven't been a lot of women because I want to be with a lot of women. It's never been my objective. It's just when you live this lifestyle for a long, long time, what most men do, especially men in the pick up arse world, which I came from many years ago, is they go through a stage, a temporary phase where they have sex with lots of women, and then they settle down and get monogamous. Um, when you're never monogamous, the numbers just keep going up and up and up and up forever, at least slowly. Um, you know, I'm not. One of these guys who's, you know, bangs 30 women, 30 new women in a year. There are a lot of guys in my audience who do those kind of things. That's fine. That's that's never been me. But anyway, um, I thought that was interesting. So let me see here. <clears throat> Fuck feminists. Looking forward to this one as always. Feminist girls are angry because they're mostly ugly, jealous of hot girls getting dick, monetizing their beauty. Fuck these vengeful trolls. They're big. Okay, you're way too concerned about feminists. I've said this many times. Feminism is not a threat to you. And here's my empirical data on this. Most of my existence as an alpha male Tupita was living in Portland, Oregon, one of the most left-wing cities in the Western world, probably the most left-wing city in North America. I went on hundreds of dates with hundreds of women. I ran into exactly two feminists, really one and a half. And that's in the most left-wing city you can come up with. Likely the city you live in is nowhere near as left as Portland. Feminist is just not a thing. Don't worry about it. It's too much. It's an, it's an internet thing, not more, not really a real-life thing. Yes, they exist, but the odds of you going on a date with a bunch of feminists, pretty low. Do you follow your morning routine exactly as planned when you used to have your MLTR stay over? No. No, it varies a little. It would vary a little. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think of the Colonia Americana area of Guadalajara? I don't think I've been there. That girl was an eight. He's a 2.5. Doesn't matter how you physically look when you're famous, when you're a man. When you're a man, it doesn't matter how you physically look. When he's talking about Bill O'Reilly, well, he's ugly. Doesn't matter if he's ugly. He's confident, wealthy, and he's, and he's famous. Uh, Bobby Lee could be a zero and still be able to pull hundreds of women because he's famous. No. You're not too dark. You're just too white. How did he pull her, Caleb? What I just said. Famous. I bet less than 25% of people here know him. Do a poll. Just because my people on a certain live stream may not know who he is, Bobby Lee has been world famous for 30 years. He was on Mad TV. I watched him on Mad TV in the 90s. He was hilarious. He is famous. Just because some people you know don't know him, he's famous. He's not A-list famous, but he's famous. There's levels of fame. <clears throat> I have had sex with a hundred women. Once you go through that, you really can't go back. Correct. You become addicted to variety, at least for me. Women will try and sometimes shame you because of this too. When you have sex with lots of girls, you establish a precedent for sexual variety. It doesn't mean you're addicted to it, <clears throat> although some men do become addicted to it. it. You establish that as a precedent in your life. We used to joke about this. We used to talk about um, Tiger Woods. 
because Tiger Woods would come out after having sex with 35 women on the side and initially his wife cheating on his wife with 35 different women. He'd say, okay, there's no more women. And the joke was, look, you don't go from 35 women on the side to zero. You might go from 35 to four, but to that, not to zero. So same thing. You can't go from 100 women to one monogamy forever. That's not how it works. You'll cheat. And I have a lot of pickup artist buddies who got married stupidly. They'd go bang a lot more than 100 girls, sometimes hundreds of girls. And then say, well, now I'm going to settle down and have kids because I don't want to bang girls anymore. Now I want to grow up and be a real man. You know, someone took the God pill, someone went right wing, whatever. They they get married, they settle down, and within months they're cheating. Of course. I just wrote an article that Alpha Male and blog about Thrill the Hunt Men. Yes. That's how it works. Right. How do you avoid getting sick often? Mostly the same advice should be given. That's not my area of expertise. I really can't answer that. I get sick, you know, about under normal conditions. And one year I, had, I was sick three times, I think 2021, because I was traveling so much. Under normal conditions, I get sick about once a year. Um, and the older you get, the longer it lasts. I've noticed this. That's fun. So, I mean, I'm not the guy to ask about that, you know. All right. Um, how big was Richard Simmons in the 70s and 80s? He was he, in the not in the, in the 80s. He was big. Richard Simmons was huge in the 80s. Are you talking about that little Polly Shore? The short I saw it. Um, Richard Simmons uh, is hilarious. He's really funny. He always was. Really funny when he went on David Letterman. Uh, Richard Simmons was hugely famous in the 80s. 80s. Not really 70s. Have you or would you ever tell a woman how many women you've had sex with? What do they say if they if they ask? You want to know something really crazy? This is true. And this surprises me. Unless I'm forgetting about somebody, no woman I have ever dated in my entire life, including my wife, has ever asked me how many women I've had sex with. Not one. You know who asked me? Men. Men ask me how many girls you fuck. Okay, but women don't ask. I don't think women want to know. When women realize, oh my God, this guy's probably been a lot of girls. I don't think they want to know. I think it, it makes them jealous or grosses them out. Even Pink Firefly. I mean, it said, you've never asked me. She goes, yeah. I said, you, you're not curious? Because I don't even know what my number is. I have to look it up. It's in the triple digits. Um, she's like, no, I don't care. So women, women don't give a fuck. <laughs> Just the way it goes, you know. Bobby Lee is all over TikTok, you know. Right. Come. You know when I hate friends cock blocking the girls I'm hitting on at night game. That's part of night game. You need to develop techniques around that. Part of night game. One guy recently moved from Columbia to Miami and did a pros and cons list. Oh, that's a no-brainer. Columbia. But a better move than I've been to remain in Columbia for net for and visit the US in a few months. I don't know. I mean. You're going to pick between shit, man. You're going to pick between Columbia and Miami. Columbia. Hello. I did a whole, I did a little video in Miami a year or two ago. Boy, has that city gone downhill in the last 10 years. It's a whole different city. I was there 10 years. I was there several times. Loved it. Came back 10 years later. I'm like, what the fuck happened to Miami? Oh, I took Pink Firefly there. You know, say, oh, you'll love Miami. Has this and that. I took her out the same spots. It used to be cool. Oh, God, what the fuck? She's like, this this is a cool city. I said, well, it used to be. Fuck that. Oh, damn. Have you been working out? You look jacked. Yeah, I'm jacked as fuck, dude. I'm just big. <clears throat> yeah, I'm working out. I have to work out. You kidding? Yeah. Alpha male, two minimums. All right. Um, we should start with the content here. How do you manage to have optimal sleep when sleeping in bed with a woman? Big, the secret to that is king size bed. Now, here's the secret to sleeping with a woman and getting good sleep. And if she loves you, she's not going to like this. But this way it goes king size bed, number one, you have your own blankets. You don't share blankets. So when you turn this way and she turns that way, you have that, that space between you and there's no blankets on your body. No. So, a pink firefly, I have a king size bed, kick ass mattress. We lay together, but I have my own blankets on me. I put them on me. Then she puts her own blankets on her, but she has one big blanket that goes over both of us so the bed looks nice because she's a girl. She gives a shit about that. So it looks like it's one bed, but it's not. And she doesn't like that. She prefers to have one blanket because women are communists, but that's how you do it. All right. Uh, let's do the, uh, the topic today, and I will get back to your questions.
Um, hang on a sec. <clears throat> I need a better place to store my notes with this new setup. I should like put a screen here or something. I don't know. All right. Anyway, where are we here? The majority of my content is my alpha male 2.0 content, excuse me, and to a degree my sovereign CEO content is for beta males to convert to alpha male 2.0s because the vast majority of men, as I've talked about many times, are beta males. The vast majority of men are not alpha males. Matter of fact, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, people think that alpha males are much more common than they actually are because they go on TikTok and they see Andrew Tate and Dan Bilzerian and Grant Cardone and all these guys screaming at them and they go and they start linking up their head. Oh, that's a lot of guys are like that. No, those are very rare isolated examples. Exception to the rule. And so um, most of my content is geared around men who are beta becoming alpha 2.0, which means becoming more confident, more active dependent, getting your alpha 2.0 business started. So you can make at least $85,000 a year, USD, location independence. You don't need your fucking job anymore. And having at least two women, not zero, that's black pill, MGTOW shit. Not one woman, that's monogamy, that doesn't work. Two women, at least, if you want more than two, you can. But at least two women who you consider at least cute. If she's average to you or ugly to you, no, just be at least cute. Doesn't be gorgeous, doesn't have to be a 10 or hot or Instagram model. Cute. You know what cute means. Two women are at least cute on rotation. You're having sex with on a regular basis. That's alpha 2.0. Now, there is a segment of you who are alpha male 1.0s. And so today I'm going to discuss how to get over the hump of being an alpha male 1.0 in terms of you being reactive and angry and wanting to boss everyone around all the fucking time and you being outcome dependent. So the alpha male 1.0 is outcome dependent. He really gives a shit about what everyone does. He wants to be respected. He wants people to respect his authority. The alpha 2.0 doesn't give a fuck. So the alpha 2.0 is happy all the time. The alpha male 1.0 is happy a lot, mad a lot. Happy a lot, mad a lot. Happy a lot, pissed a lot. Difference. Up and down and up and down and up and down. Alpha male 1.0s, I should call them ping pongs. Up and down and 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 up and down. Sucks. Okay? Now. Um, a lot of you will say, I'm going to move my keyboard over. Hang on. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, uh, shit. Hang on a second. Still going to use my new setup. Hang on a second here. Where is the other screen? Here we go. Okay. Hang on. There, that's about, ah, shit. No, hang on a second. I apologize. Hang on a moment. There we go. Okay. Some of you will say, well, I'm kind of like an alpha male 1.0 sometimes. Now, there's a lot of you, perhaps a decent amount of you in my audience, who are beta males, but you have alpha male 1.0 traits. Sometimes you become an alpha male 1.0 for a little bit, right? You know what I'm saying, right? A lot of you are like that. So this will this will also help you as well. You beta males who sometimes alpha male 1.0 up for a while, then you go back to being a beta. And you alpha male 1.0s who are strong, confident, masculine, alpha male guys who kick ass. But when your girlfriend or girls you date or when politics or when anything happens in your business, you're fucking pissed off the guy. What the fuck? And you yell and you are, have arguments and drama and, and the women yell back at you because Western women don't, Alpha male 1.0 lives in a fantasy world. Andrew Tate and <laughs> Jordan Peterson, guys that both live in this fantasy world, but a lot of other guys besides them. A lot of you, a lot of you, a lot of guys there live in this world where if you're alpha and you're strong and you fucking tell women out, out you will do this and you will do that. West modern day 21st century Western women will say, Oh, yes, you're right, master. Thank you. I will start doing that now. No, they will not. They'll say, fuck you. And then you have drama. All right. So um there are two key problems with the alpha male 1.0. Number one is reactivity. Alpha male 1.0 or the beta who becomes alpha 1.0 sometimes. The first one is reactivity. The second one is outcome dependence. We're going to attack both. First, we talk about reactivity, having a reactive personality, which means someone says something to you and you get fucking mad. Someone does something little that's bad and you get really fucking pissed. You feel disrespected. You feel assaulted. You feel, you know, 
I've said many times, you can, you can attack me any way you want. You, you, and I won't give a shit. You can call me names. You can attack my physical appearance. You can, you can say anything you want about how I physically look. You can attack my material. You can attack my wife. You can attack my kids. I go, okay, I don't care. I'm not reactive because I like being happy. I'm also a come independent. So non-reactivity and outcome independence go hand in hand. Whereas if someone says something, you know, you hear like a sentence in a podcast and you just lose your shit. You, you read a comment or someone like me says something, you just get so fucking mad. You see something happen in politics, you get so fucking mad, right? The woman you're dating says something, one item that you're fine. She says one thing you don't like and you just lose your shit. That means you're reactive and that's a problem. You don't want to be reactive because the more reactive you are, the less happy you tend to be. Oh, hang on a sec. First thing you can do. Now, the problem is this is a little complicated because you can only do this at a doctor's office. So what I would recommend is next time you go to a doctor's office, usually when you go to the doctor, the nurse practitioner brings you in and shows your blood pressure and, and weighs you and all that bullshit, and then you see the doctor. So the next time you do this, put this in your mental to-do list. This teaches you and shows you whether or not you have a, you're a, what's called a cold reactor or a hot reactor. This is real science. Here's the procedure. So write this down, all right? The procedure is this. The only thing you need, the only two things you need is a blood pressure machine, which is why I can only do this in the doctor's office, and a bowl of water full of ice water, not cold water, ice water, water with ice in it, okay? Big, a big bowl enough to put your hand in when you're opening your hand, you're splaying out your fingers, okay? A bowl big enough for that, not a cup, a bowl, okay? That's all you need. Here's what you do. You get your blood pressure taken, right? Write down the number. Whatever over whatever, right? Okay, then what you do is you get a timer ready. You use your phone. You hold your hand out, left or right, doesn't matter. Splay your fingers out, and you put your hand in the bowl full of ice water only up to your wrist. So right about here, okay? That's it. Not your whole arm, just up to your wrist. You leave it in there for 120 seconds, freezing cold water. You just sit there. Beep, beep, timer goes off. You pull your hand out, shake it off, dry it off quickly. Immediately get your blood pressure taken again. If your blood pressure goes up 15 points or more, you are what they call in the biz a hot reactor. You are a reactive personality. This is something you were born with. Although this has something you can change. If, you're, if your blood pressure goes up, is the same or less or goes up two or three or four. When I did this, my blood pressure, they go up two points. If your blood pressure goes up less than 50, you are a... You're a cool cucumber. You're a cool, you're a cold reactor. You're not a reactive person, right? When I did this one up, I think two, three points, I think, because I'm outcome independent and I'm a happy guy and I don't give a fuck. It's nice. So if your blood pressure goes up more than 15 points when you do this, you are at extremely high risk for heart attack, heart disease, and certain types of cancer, as opposed to someone like me who doesn't give a fuck. So that means that it is even more important you do what I'm about to tell you, the techniques I'm about to give you to calm the fuck down and to manage your stress and your reactivity. If you don't do that, your odds of a heart attack and or heart disease, heart-related problems and or certain types of cancer as you get even a little older are very, 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 very high. When you see people die of heart attacks or even have a heart attack when they're like in their 40s or 50s or 60s, you're like, why do you have a heart attack? You're so young. It's these motherfuckers. These guys are reactive all the fucking time. Okay? So put that in your to-do list to do next time you're at the doctor's office. Um, also, reactive negativity is only half of it. Reactive positivity is just as bad. What? Yes. Perfect example I've been many times. And this is a this is a perfect example. If you're an American, if you're a right-wingish American... And if when Trump won the election in 2016, you were ecstatic. You were so fucking happy. That's just as bad. Because that also means you're reactive to something that didn't fucking matter. What's hilarious to me is this meme that you've seen 10,000 times now of that feminist wearing that beanie sitting on the streets going, ah, she's screaming up at the sky when Trump won. You, you see it 10,000 times because right wingers put it all over their fucking videos. That woman who probably is a hot reactor and stupid. The men making fun of that woman who are so excited that Trump got elected are just as bad as her. So if you are super excited, 
instantly about these little things like who the president is in a collapsing Western country that don't make a difference in your life. And you just get so fucking pumped up. That is also just as bad. So you have negative reactivity and you have positive re reactivity. If you have an excess of either one and usually you have an excess of one, you have an excess of another. Usually. Caleb, I have an emotional personality. So what? I am not talking about whether or not you have an emotional personality. You can have a very emotional personality and have low reactivity. I've met people like this. You can have a very emotional personality. Myers-Briggs, you have a high E. You can have an emotional personality and not be a hot or hot or positive reactor. You can't. I'm not just talking about emotions, I'm talking about reactivity. Though I will agree, if you have a more emotional personality, the odds are higher that you have a more reactive personality. I have a low emotion personality, so it's easier for me to just go, I don't give a fuck. Okay, great. When Trump won the election, I said, don't give a fuck. Okay, great. America's still fucked, and I was right. <laughs> That's very simple. Wrote a whole article about it at the time. All right, next thing. Um, first, reactivity prevention. We're going to attack the uh, physiological ways in which you can manage this, you alpha male 1.0s or alpha male 1.0-ish beta males, okay? Hang on a sec. Double-checking the technology, making sure I'm good. We're good. Okay. Number one, top of the list. I've said this 10,000 times. I'm going to keep saying this because people don't fucking do this. You're not getting enough sleep. Period. End of story. If you're reactive, if you're pissed off easily, if you're getting a lot of drama in your life, odds are overwhelming. You're not getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep a night every night. That means you are in bed, lights out, seven to eight hours. Some weirdos need more than eight. Some weirdos need nine. I'm optimal at eight eight hours and 15 minutes or eight, between eight hours and 15 minutes and eight, eight and a half hours for me. Depends on your person, not personality. Depends on your metabolism. Depends on your genetics. Depends on what you're exercising. Depends on a lot of shit. Okay. The best thing you can buy, best $300 you can spend is this right here on my ring or a ring, 300 bucks. Get one. It'll change your life. You're not getting enough goddamn sleep. You're making a bunch of excuses. Well, I'm a night person. Well, I don't have time, but my job, but my kids, but this, but I play video games and I can't stop because I'm a pussy. I don't give a fuck. Seven to eight hours of sleep. Most people in the world, especially the West, collapsing Western world, are not getting enough sleep. Of course, you're going to be touchy and irritable all fucking day. One of the biggest reasons that I look as young as I do and I'm as happy as I am and I'm as healthy as I am is all because I've been getting eight hours of sleep for the past, Jesus, what, 35 years? I take this very, very, very seriously. They have done numerous studies. The data is in. The most important thing you can do for your day-to-day -day health and energy levels, more important than exercise and more important than diet, yes, is sleep. It's the most important fucking thing. Some of you have pretty good diets. You're still not getting enough sleep. You're fucking all this up. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Seven to eight hours. But Caleb, it's hard because dumb shit. You sit down and plan it out. Plan out seven hours when you got to go to bed, when you got to wake up and figure it out. I've talked about all the techniques, blue blockers, all that shit at night. And you know all the techniques if you know my content. Okay, I don't need to go through all this now. Fucking get seven to eight hours of sleep in some cases more. Seven minimum, 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 minimum. Well, I have trouble sleeping and da da da. I've talked about how in this apartment, I spent a decent amount of money, not a decent amount of money, decent amount of time and effort uh, blocking off the, the sliding glass door. I'll do a walkthrough video one of these days, this little apartment I'm in. The, I have a sliding glass door in the other room where my bed is, okay? And I you can get these things on Amazon, these uh, wall stickers. It's this black, it's, it's black, jet black, and stick in one side, you could cover a window with it. There isn't one ounce of light in that room. It's dead dark because what I have to do is stay up late to be compatible with North American time zones. I'm here in Dubai. So I step to like 1.30 in the morning and I wake up at about what? 10, whatever that is. So whatever, eight hours, eight and a half, 10-ish, 10, 15 in the morning. So it's sunny here in Dubai at 10.15. I don't want to have sun. I want to sleep. I put in earplugs every time I go to sleep. I have mouth tape. I tape my mouth shut. Yes. I have nose strips to open up my nose, open up my nasal passages. I have one of these air purifiers over there blowing right on me, so I'm breathing perfect air, and it's nice and cold. I have a perfect mattress. I have a perfect blanket. I have perfect pillows. 
Even if I'm sleeping with my wife, she has to adhere to all this shit. Now, right now, she's in the United States. I do this part. I take this shit seriously. You've got to take sleep seriously in the modern era where you're staring at fucking screens all day. All right? Or else you're going to be a reactive asshole and you're going to be pissed the rest of your life. Which one do you want? Well, let's see here. All right, I'm getting used to this new setup. Number two, again, this is nothing new if you don't like content. You need to check your hormones. Your hormone level could be off. Matter of fact, they probably are off. The four hormones every man should check once a year, or at least once every three years, I would say. I check them every year. Testosterone, estradiol, which is uh, estrogen. You need to check that. T3, which is your thyroid. They also do TSH and T4, which is less important. T3, T3 is not testosterone, it's thyroid and vitamin D. All four of those levels. If any one of these are dramatically lower or too high, you're going to be irritable and pissed off. You'll be less happy. More testosterone doesn't mean you're an asshole. It means you're happier. The more testosterone turning into a monster, that's if you do steroids. Your testosterone should never go beyond your total testosterone in terms of PGNL nanograms per deciliter, that's the American measurement, should never be more than 1,200. So if you go to 3,000, yeah, it's going to turn you into a maniac. I'm not talking about this. 700 to 1,200, ideally, for the rest of your life. Mine is 1130, just under that 1,200, perfect. Okay? Estradiol in American measurements should be between 20 and 30, closer to 20. If it's way past 30 or way below 20, you're going to be a dick. And you won't, your dick's not going to work very well, too, speaking of dicks. Okay, thyroid, I forget the numbers. I think it should be 3.8 to 4.0. And vitamin D, higher the better. Over 50 is best. If you're too low or in some cases too high, fucking fix it. You should know these numbers. Not only just for being an asshole, but also for being happy, effective, high energy, being able to focus at work, sexual performance, all that stuff is related to these hormones. Most of you have hormones that are way off, including you young guys. We now have an epidemic of guys in their fucking 20s with total testosterone lower than 300. It's never happened before in human history. Oh, all right. That's the next thing. Third thing. I mentioned this in a prior live stream. I'm not going to go into detail about this. Especially if you're pissed off or scared about the news, 30-day news diet. No more, no news for 30 days. I'm going to mention something about this in a second. You guys were all like, Caleb, what about Israel? I think we have a World War III. You know how many times Israel and Lebanon, not Lebanon, Israel, Israel and the Palestinians have been attacking each other since the 1960s? About 100. I'm exaggerating slightly. No, it's fine. The war in Ukraine, or what's going on with Bitcoin, or what's going on with Trump and Biden, and it's fucking hell, man. Get off the news. You're watching too much fucking news. A lot of you are watching too much fucking news. It's making you a spastic asshole. A spastic location-dependent asshole either beta male or alpha male in both cases. You get both extremes in there. Now, here's the thing about this. If this is, if you, if you're thinking to yourself, yeah, I should do that, but I can't do that. I can never do that. I can't just not watch the news for three. I can't do it. If you think you quote, can't do it, you have an addiction problem. You have an even bigger problem. That's not an excuse. That means you have a, a real problem. If you can, oh, I can't do that. I've talked to guys about stop playing video games for six, seven, eight hours a day. I used to play, I don't play video games anymore because I work on my mission, but I used to play a video games for one hour a day. I would time it one hour. When the timer went off, I'd save my game and go back to work. I had guys tell me these fucking millennials and some Gen Zs back there was more millennials. Well, I can't do that. I can't do that. You have an addiction problem. You have a bigger problem than being an alpha 1.0. Number four, this is specifically for you alpha 1.0s. Okay. And you're going to relate to this as soon as I say it. As soon as I say it, you're going to go, yeah, shit. And some of you more confident beta males who have alpha male one-pro traits. Hang on a second. Let me check the technology here. Hang on. If you are reactive and outcome dependent and pissed frequently, if you're an alpha male 1.0 or more confident beta male, you know what that probably means statistically? I'm going to say something. You're going to be shocked, but I'm going to be right. There is a woman in your life 
who is causing you stress and you're sticking around with her. Let me say that again, you fuckers. A lot of you in my audience like this. There is a particular woman in your life, you know who she is, who is causing you stress and angst, but because you have one-itis, and I've talked about how alpha males get one, alpha male one putos, get one-itis harder and faster than beta males do. I've talked about this. Because you have fucking one-itis, you won't dump kick her to the curb like you should. So you just keep her around and you keep the stress. Next, that bitch. Even if it's your fault, she's a bitch. Because in some cases, she's a bitch because you, because you're the asshole. I've had guys, when I do like um, live seminars, they either say this privately or they'll say it in the group. They'll say, well, I have a lot of drama in relationships, but I'm the one who starts the drama. Christ almighty. All right. What the hell are you doing? So there's a lot of you who has a certain woman, either you are, God forbid, monogamous, you have one woman, stupid, or you have several women, but your main girl, or one of your main girls, your, one of your MLTRs is just driving up the fucking wall. But because she's hot or because she gives good blowjobs or because you, you know, she's been around for two years, you want to replace her, you're putting up with her shit. Out, out, out the door. There's a reason I teach nexting. Out. I don't care if you're married to her. She's the mother of your children. I divorced the mother of my children many, many years. Back when I was a beta, I did it. Didn't want to do it. Didn't feel good about it, but it needed to be done. I still loved her when I did it. Doesn't matter. If you've got a woman in your life who's causing you a bunch of bullshit, get rid of that woman. Now, let me add one more piece to this. This is a beta male thing now. You betas who have this problem. Sometimes that woman is your mom. Guess what you need to do? Now, you can't next your mom forever, but you can remove your mom temporarily from your life. Or you can actually limit the amount of time you spend with your mom. But kid, you understand I live with my mom. Why? Why do you live with your mom, you big pussy? I moved out when I was 18 in the middle of a recession. I made it work. Okay. Do a whole thing on that, I won't. You get my point. And you know who you are when I say this. If you're watching this live stream or watching the recording or listening to the podcast, you know it's you. I know there's a lot of you like this. You're like, oh, shit, that's right. <laughs> do what you got to do. I'm going to say this. I've said this 10,000 times. I'm going to say it 10,000 more. Within a, most of you live in or near a major metropolitan area or city. Within a 50 minute driving, 50, 5 0, 50 minute driving radius of your home, there are over 100,000, most likely, cute girls of the age range you like who are not married that you could go date or have sex with. Why are you worried about this one? called one-itis. Stop. Just say no. Okay. Hang on. Um, now let's deal with reactivity. Let's deal with what to do when it happens. Okay? Because if it happens, what to do in the moment. This is harder to do. What I just gave you, all the things I just told you are things that will help you have it happen less often or when it happens less intensely. Here's what you do if it actually happens. First, and this is the hardest part, when you start feeling reactive, like, God, damn, when you start feeling that, why didn't you say, when you start feeling that, you have to learn to train your brain to stop. You come to a complete stop, a pause, pause for a second. Instead of just leaning into the anger and screaming and being a dickhead and causing all kinds of drama and problem in your life, stop, train yourself to stop. Oh shit, I'm losing it. Whatever signal you need to come up with yourself, stop. And then when you stop, you force yourself to take three deep breaths. And you're not going to want to. You're going to want to scream and yell or get mad at whoever you're mad at. Okay? Instead, stop. Step one. Stop. Stop. Three deep breaths. And you're not going to want to, but make so. And they're probably, when you're really fucking mad, they won't be very good high-quality breaths. But doing three bad deep breaths is better than doing none at all. Caleb, what if I'm standing in front of a girl and I do that in front of her? Well, good. It might scare her. That's great. <laughs> It'll convey to her that you pissed her off. That's okay. Stop giving a fuck what other people think. Who cares what she thinks? It's three deep 
breaths. Okay. Step three, you need to remember the big picture. In my book on how to manage a marriage, a non-monogamous marriage, open-marriage.com if you're interested, I talk about how when you live with a woman, particularly in a non-monogamous relationship, the goal is not to win the battle. The goal is to win the war. And often you need to just give up on certain battles in order to win the war. If your objective with your girlfriend or your wife or a serious woman in your life is to win every argument, you're going to have a miserable relationship. And the beauty is if you're outcome independent, you're not going to give a shit about most things that normal guys disagree with. Pink Firefly will always decorate our entire house except for my office. I don't care. Instead of saying, well, I don't like the couch over there in the living room. You should, well, that, and you fight about it. Let her do whatever the fuck she wants. You lose, quote unquote, the battle. You don't really lose. You don't care. But you win the war. You have a hot wife or hot girlfriend, and you have all these hot FBs on the side, and you're financially protected. There's a divorce. That's alpha male two and all the So you have to remember the big picture. Is the big picture here to be mad at this moment and get pissed off about this little thing? Or is the big picture to enjoy my life and to enjoy the woman I'm with or enjoy this person I'm with? It may not be a woman. It could be a, a buddy of yours. Okay. Remember the big picture. Why are you here? Mission, long-term goals, the meaning of your life. Remember the big picture. When you're mad, you're forgetting the big picture. You're focused on the last five words you just heard. Is that the big picture, the last five words you heard someone say or do? No. Or like where she left the fork on the, you know, all the things that Alpha Male Wampanoes get pissed off about. Um, last one. When someone is making you angry and making you is a false word, no one's making you angry. Let me rewind that for a second. People believe that emotions are things that other people beam into them with their eyes from across the room. So people will say, you make me mad, right? You've heard that 10,000 times. You've probably said it to people. What a beta male thing to say. You will never hear someone say, you make me nice. I wonder why that is. Why do we attribute our negative emotions to what other people are doing and forcing us to feel and all of our positive emotions are us? No. Emotions come from inside you. So if someone says something to you and you get mad, it's not coming from that person. It's coming from you. Well, he called me an asshole. Is it? Doesn't matter. Well, he made a racial slur. Doesn't matter. Well, he called my wife a, a cunt. Doesn't matter. Why does any of this matter? This is all coming from you. You could say all three of those things to me. I wouldn't give a fuck. I don't care. How come I don't care and you care? Because it comes from you, just like it comes from me. Right? So remember where the emotions come from. They come from inside you. That's how you can say something. You could have three men sitting at a table. Someone could walk up and horribly insult all three men with one statement. And one guy will lose his fucking shit. Another guy will be, man, that's that's shitty. And another guy will be like, me going, okay. Right? That means it's coming from internally from you. It's not coming from anything external. Okay, so when you're getting mad because of something someone else did or said, you are giving that person the power. I told my wife this many times. My wife is an emotional person. She tends to hold grudges a little bit, and she'll be mad about something someone did or said four years ago. And I said, why are you giving that person the power over you? That person is now one. Whereas no one has power over me, you can't make me mad. Try making me mad. Try it. Last time I got mad, is Josh still in the live stream? I think my son's on this live stream. He can back this up. If you if you think if if I'm lying, he can correct me. The last time I got mad, like God damn it, was early 2000s when my kids were little. We lived in Oregon City, Oregon, and my house was robbed. And my wife at the time was very scared. They damaged a bunch of furniture. They stole a bunch of stuff. I was fucking mad. I was pounding tables. And what's hilarious is. Both my wife at the time and my two children had never seen me mad like that. They're like, oh, shit, dad's actually mad. That was about 2001. It was 23 years ago. I haven't been mad in 23 years. And that's how bad you have to get to make me mad. you got to come in and rob my house and terrorize my family to make me mad. I haven't been mad since then. Irritated, sure. Irritated, yeah. Other negative emotions a little bit, not like, God, fuck, and, and, no. I pretended to get mad. I yell at you guys all the time. I'm not mad. I don't care. 
because it comes from me. So I don't want anyone controlling me. So when you're trying to calm down and you've taken your three deep breaths, you're in the big picture, you're going to need to say to yourself, why am I giving this person the power over me? If I can say something to you and make you really fucking mad and cause you to yell at me or write me an angry email, I have power over you. You don't have power over me. Ooh, see, if you're an alpha and one buddy, oh, shit, I don't want anyone power over me. I'm the one who should have the power. Right. That should help you realize where the locus of the emotions are coming from you. Don't give other people power by having them have that control over you. I'm going to say this again. If I can say something or anyone can say it, if your girlfriend can say something, if your MLTR can say something that'll make you fucking mad, that person controls you. No one controls me because no one can make me mad. Even my own wife. My own wife, there's nothing my wife could say or do to make me mad other than maybe, you know, you have to murder someone. Yes, if you murder one of my children, you'd probably make me mad. But that's how bad it has to get. Eh. Let's see here. Alchemy Independence. Two things. Two things here for Alchemy Independence. How to develop Alchemy Independence. I have an entire mini course, by the way, on Alchemy Independence. Uh, you can go to sovereignceo.io slash MC if you want to get it. Okay. The number one question you have to develop Alchemy Independence to stop giving a fuck, giving a shit is, why do I care? You know, women should respect men. I don't like it because she's six minutes late. And this is, why do you care? Because she's six minutes late. Why do you care? Because she needs to respect my time. Why do you care if she respects your time? Because women should respect my time. Why should all women respect your time? You just keep asking yourself, why do I care about that? 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 And eventually, if you do this all the way down to the root reason, you're going to get to something stupid. Because you're going to get down to like the root reason. Because when I was seven years old, my dad said I should care. Why do you And then your brain goes, I guess I shouldn't care about that. That's pretty stupid. <laughs> That's you do this. Why do I care? Why do I care about that? Why do I care about that? You keep drilling down until you uncover the real reason. The real reason is almost always societal programming. Is societal programming factual or not? It's not. So why do you care? Why do you give a shit about this? Usually it's because someone told you, an authority figure, often a masculine authority figure, your dad, if you had a dad, um, your dad figure, Andrew Tate, Jordan Peterson, you know, God knows. Some, your older brother at some point a long time ago said, you're supposed to care about this. Real men care about this. And your little brain said, oh, okay, I'll care about that now. Instead of analyzing, it said, why does that fucking matter? You know what I care about? Don't murder anyone I love. Don't steal my money. That's about it. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm probably a few other things that might make me mad. Other than that, I don't give a fuck. I don't care what you say or do. I don't care. I'm going to pick because I don't care. That's the first one. Second one. Here's another one. Double check here. Ask yourself, do you really want to be happy? There's a percentage of men in the world, a lot of them are called Christians, who don't really want to be happy. Happiness bothers them. Um, if you've seen Jordan Peterson talk about happiness, Several of you have sent me clips about this. Thank you. I've already seen them. Happiness isn't important. What's important is meaning. Uh, what's important is both. That's why I talk about having a mission. Most important thing in life is that's a mission, a meaning to your life. Why do you have a mission? So that you can be happy. You don't want to have meaning and a mission and not give a fuck about happiness. Boy, would I be a miserable existence? No. And you don't want to be happy and just do a bunch of happy, stupid shit without any meaning. You need both. But there are a lot of men who are very uncomfortable with the concept of happiness. And there's some men who, and occasionally you'll see them in my audience, like, why, you know, who cares about happiness? You know, life is not about being happy, Caleb. Life's about being a Christian and voting for Republicans and, and having children and being a good father and a good husband and all the societal programming stuff. Great, if that's really your attitude, to be a miserable person and not be happy, go ahead. This content isn't for you. And you can go do whatever you want. You might be one of these people who doesn't want to be happy. So if you really don't give a shit about being long-term happy, Go ahead and scream at your girlfriend all you want. There are some personalities, some people, some races, I talk about Hispanic people in particular, who kind of like drama. They kind of like screaming and yelling, or at least it doesn't bother them. They just kind of think it's fun. There are lots of Hispanic guys, I know many of them, who have wives or girls, and they scream and yell and scream and yell at these people, and they go, yeah, we yeah, we scream and yell, it's way good, it's our family, it's who cares, who cares? Okay, Italians too, some Koreans. 
part of the culture. Great. If that's really what you want for your life, then go do that. No one says you have to do what I'm talking about. If you don't want to be happy, don't follow my advice. It's fine. That's the difference between most, me and other people. If you want to follow what I'm talking about, then don't, don't, be, don't be happy. Go vote for Donald Trump and you, great. You'll never be happy, but I don't think you want to be happy. So if that's you, then fine. But if it is you, if you say, if you look internally to yourself, say, do I really want to be long-term happy? I don't want to live Caleb's life exactly. By the way, you don't have to be exactly like me. Most of you shouldn't be like me. Alpha male 2.0 is not necessarily what Caleb does. There's Caleb's opinion on how he handles alpha male 2.0, and there's alpha 2.0 structure. If you really want to be long-term happy, then you need to follow these structures. Long-term monogamy is not going to make you long-term happy. It's not. Being a nine-to-five wage slave and having a job is not going to make you happy long-term. It's not. It's fine. So make that decision. Some of you are trying to be something you aren't. I went through that when I was a young man. Well, I mean, societal program tells you to be a certain way, and then you realize, oh, shit, I don't want to do that. I want to be, I want to be like this. I spent my entire 20s pursuing a lifestyle that I was supposed, supposed to want. The societal program told me I was supposed to have. And by the time I was 30, 31, I'm like, well, this sucks. I'm making six figures and, you know, had a family, and it wasn't what I wanted. Loved my kids. I even loved my wife at the time. Didn't like her very much. <laughs> Um, last one, and this is a touchy topic. So I'm just going to go through this really quick. If you're going off, off, if you're just going off all the fucking time, you're, you just have this huge fucking temper and you're screaming at people all the time. You're pissed off all the time. You're depressed all the time. Especially you do all this stuff. You're getting plenty of sleep. Your hormones are great. Check that stuff first. You might need to go see a fucking therapist. And I know go, oh, I don't want to see a therapist. They're all feminists. And they're, okay. Listen, R first of all, rule of three. You go in for the first therapist knowing that the therapist is going to suck. You might have to fire him or her. If you want to have a him, that's fine. And you have to go to the second therapist. Then go to the third therapist. By the time you get the third one, that'll be a good therapist. Okay? You might need to fucking do this. I'm sorry. Some of you need to do this. I get emails from some of you where I'm like, whoa. I'm not going to go into details, but like, dude, this is beyond my ability. You need to see, a, see somebody. Some of you had some really fucked up shit in your childhood. Some of you did, right? You know you are. You might need to go talk to someone. Caleb, I tried that once. Yeah, the stupidest thing people say. I tried that once. It didn't work. That's not what I said. I said rule of three. That means you try three times, three different people, not once. You don't try something once say this doesn't work in life, in women, in business. You try it many, many, many times. Change your approach each time. You might need to do this. Not all of you, but a, a, a percentage of you might need to do this. Well, that's for, that's for girls. Only girls do this. And, all right, you going to be unhappy the rest of your life then? What do you want to do? If I was pissed off all the fucking time, and I did all the stuff, I was getting plenty of sleep, hormonal levels were perfect, I'm exercising, meditating, all the stuff I talk about, okay? If I, and I'm still fucking pissed all the time, I would go seek therapy. I wouldn't have an attitude about it, have an ego about it. I'm like, all right, I, better, I want this fucking fixed. I treat that the same way I would treat if I had massive ED, if my dick didn't work and I couldn't have sex. People say, what, what would happen if you had ED? Uh, I'd go to the doctor and I'd say, fix this. And if you couldn't fix it, I'd go to the next doctor, fix it. And then I'd go to, I'd go to 27 doctors until it was fixed. I would just say, oh, well, it's one am. No, it's the same thing. If I was pissed off all the time, reactive all the time, and I'd done everything else, some of you might need to do this. Don't make excuses about this. That's beta male shit. Assuming you want to be happy. That's what you have to say. Do I really want to be happy? Some of you don't. Then don't. I'm not going to pin it, so I don't care. <laughs> I've also said, I'll wrap up with this one, then I'll get your questions. I've also said many times, alpha male 2.0 is only for about 10% of men. 90% of men are going to go, oh, this is stupid. This is, I'm not going to do this. Well, I or, or I would never do that, or I'd love to do it, but I'm too scared. So alpha male 2.0 is only for 10% of guys. Guys on a regular basis said, well, not all men can do this, or not all men want to do this. Correct. That's the 90%. They can go down with the ship the rest of the collapsing west. Fine. That, that's their problem. 10%. The 10% of you who want to be happy and want to be free and live a good life and be happy long-term, not just when you get a new girlfriend or not just when you get married. Because <laughs> you get divorced or break up, you'll be unhappy again. Make sense? All right. That's it. Let me go back to your questions. Hang on. I'm going to scroll up here. 
<clears throat> the questions I missed. Actually, hang on, let me get some water. Some water in my dry throat. Ah, let's see. Um, <clears throat> let's see. What's your take on women that are more aggressive with respect to being intimate with you from dating apps? Do you like it when they have such low ASD as a red flag? There's no such thing in my world as a red flag unless she's a bitch to me or she hates sex. There's no such thing as a red flag because if, if there's a red flag, you make her an FB. So more aggressive, I've talked about this. Sexually aggressive, that's great. Wear a good condom. And if that bothers you, make her an FB. Uh, let's see. What's the best way to pick a boat chick at a grocery store? I don't teach day game. Can't help you with that. <clears throat> There's Joshua Hall. My, if you didn't know, Joshua Hall is my son. He's on the live stream. I don't know if he's still here. How did you manage your projects when you had kids? As in the rule of two, <clears throat> I know you said before that kids are one of the biggest things in life. Rule of two only applies to improvement areas. So once you're at a level where you're doing a good job with your kids, you put your kids on maintenance mode. And that's fine. If you're trying to improve yourself as a dad, that'd be one of your rule of two, one of your two. If you're just going to maintain your schedule with your kids and do what you're doing and you think it's good, that's maintenance mode. It doesn't count. <clears throat> Bro, you look great. Thank you. Pretty sure most alpha ones have undiagnosed narcissism. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I'm not a thyro I'm not a psychiatrist. Um, are you still taking one mg of an astros all week? I am not. Not to reduce your estrogen too much now that you have less fat. No, no, I've cut way back on an astrozol. I don't like an astrozol. I wish it was an option to not take it. Um, no, I take half of an mg every other week. So I'm microdosing. I'm microdosing an astrozol. What advice you give to Andrew Tate regarding what? That's too general a question. And he wouldn't listen to any of my advice. Is your main problem with religion its restrictions on sex or are there any other big ones? My main problem with religion is that it's false. Anything false. Same problem I have with communism, socialism, religion. I don't believe in the Santa Claus or Narnia or any of those things. It's just it's false. Uh, it's, I don't have a problem with it. It's fine. My wife is a Christian. It's all right. My mom is a Christian. I don't care. I live in a Muslim country. A lot of good buddies here who are, who are hardcore Muslims. Like, it's fine. No problem. With it. It's just not true. Are your affirmations self-created? And if so, would you like to share at least one of them? Um, my phone is my camera, else I couldn't give you one. They're all self-created, yes. Are human rights a real thing that exists, or is it something people made up? I'm assuming you since... I'm assuming you think it's made up since you don't have a religion. Human rights is something that is made up. Yes, correct. But I agree with that. I agree with it. <clears throat> what is the best way to run a society? Do you let everyone murder everybody else? Is that the best way to run us? No. Therefore, you have to invent something called human rights, and people don't do that. Since you grew up in Westland, Oregon, you never know Chanel Sonnen, MMA guy, massive alpha. He's 46. Uh, I am about to turn 52, so I would not know him. That's not within four years. So that name is not familiar to me. Hi, Caleb. I've read your book, and I'm doing the E3D review. Would you be able to talk about what you do in addition to this, like an annually quarter review or a three- to five-year plan? Go to my last live stream last week. I talk about exactly what I'm doing, planning out, or the last one, the one before that, on, this, on my Sovereign CEO channel. I go through in detail how I plan the quarter. Also, who made the Alpha Tumino podcast music fits really well? That is Godzilla Final Wars Battle Scene. You can YouTube it. I think your advice will ultimately fall on deaf ears. Usually if someone is projecting their anger, it's a sign of others. And well, you guys are doing all this uh, armchair psychology. Okay. That's my point. Some people don't want to be happy. Some people don't want to change. Okay, don't. I don't care. <clears throat> alpha Tupano is just solipsism with extra steps. Uh, alpha Tupano is the opposite. It's based on objective reality. It's the exact opposite of solipsism. Monitoring and dealing with women over time, doing integrating the way women actually are, 
the way men actually are long term, neither are monogamous. That's objective reality. It's the opposite of solipsism. But again, if you think Alpha Tubido is stupid, then don't do it. What I just said earlier, it's fine. I'm bummed both my MLTRs left at the same time. I've had that happen. I've had that happen. I've had two MLTRs or like both lefties leaving like at the same two week, three week period. Yeah, I've had that happen. Now I have to find more in a rotation. It sucks, but at least I don't have one on us. Good. Also, the ideal minimum number of women is three. That way, two can leave. You still got something. Or usually it's one leads, you're down to two, and you're not monogamous. So you have plenty of time to replace that third. So the ult the best number of women is three. Two is technically okay, but the best is three. My month, my MLTR two months, only two months. Oh, left because she snooped around Facebook and found I commented gorgeous on my ex's post that she mentioned me in. Well, you should have done that. That's a terrible mistake. Never compliment any women publicly on social media. That is a total beta male move. Don't ever do that again. Another MLTR left because I don't respond to her every day. That's good. You don't want her. You don't want that. Too needy. Have you ever been in therapy before? Yes, for couples therapy. Through I, my wife and I, <clears throat> I managed this. We got when we got serious. Couples therapy. I was in couples therapy very briefly with a woman before Pink Firefly. I went three or four times because she wanted to go. I just did it as a favor to her. It was MLTR. Um, and let's see. I do recall when I was like in high school. When I was in high school, I went to my parents made me go see a therapist like twice because I hated school or something like that. Uh, other than that, that's it. So, yes, the answer is yes, but it's all usually not couples stuff. I do have coaches, though. I work with coaches. That's that's my therapy is coaches. <laughs> do you need a dominant frame for attraction with women? No. Identity, reality, maybe other dealings. No, I do not have a dominant frame. I have an alpha male frame, confident frame, masculine frame, but I'm 2.0. I don't care what a woman does. I let her do whatever she wants. All the way my life, including my wife, could go fuck other guys if she wanted to. She doesn't, but she can. So I'm the opposite of dominant. You do whatever you want. I don't care. I'm busy working and banging other chicks. I found a therapist a waste of time. It's a giant Ponzi skin. There we go. Right. That means you tried one once and it didn't work, right? You're, you're exactly my point. How much do I get an FB to not A? Do you think Columbia will still have a good flag as Western men have been getting murdered there? Go watch my video on Mexico. It's not Colombia, but it's the same exact thing. Look at the statistical probability of you getting murdered in Colombia. It's a fraction of a fraction, a fraction of 1%. Then you need to watch my video on the 2% rule and listen to it very carefully. You're worried about something that will not happen to you. When an MLTR would stay over two or three days, and would you, when an MLTR would stay over for two or three days, and you would follow your schedule, what would she do during that time, her own work? If I was working, she'd do her own shit. Yeah. Back then, she'd clean my house. <laughs> she'd just do her own shit. Yeah. How do you increase your serotonin baseline? I do not know how to do that. Question. Talk about respect. Oh, boy. Okay, I have a feeling this is going to be an alpha male 1.0 question. Let's see if I'm right. What if you live together with your wife and she belittles you? If you're just chill and not angry about it, don't you think she'll keep repeating the behavior in the future? Watch this. Your wife belittles you. You say, hey, listen, God damn it. Don't fucking do that. Okay? And you do that every time. Or every time she belittles you, you go, <laughs> and you just leave the room. What do you think is going to happen? You think she's going to belittle you, belittle you more or less? Try it. Alchemy independence works wonders. Or just say, yeah, it's great. <laughs> and, this, and then turn around and leave the room and go back to work. Try that three or four times and watch what your wife will do. She'll be terrified. So that little dose now gets you estradiol between 20 and 30. Yes, sir. Uh, last time I checked it was 21, I think. Yeah. I also take uh, DIM Plus, which is a estrogen naturopathic balancer. I take that every day with food. So let's do that. I don't live a high estrogen lifestyle. I don't. I don't eat soy. I get plenty of sleep. I drink massively filtered water. I don't drink tap water. 
all this estrogen stuff I keep away from me as best I can. You're supposed to be, if you're not supposed to be reactive, angry about it, then what is the best way to deal with it? Oh, I answer that question. Where is the conservative idea that happiness not important comes from? It comes from religion, comes from hardcore Christianity, which comes out of, um, uh, what is it called? Not just Christianity, I'm trying to be more specific. It comes from Calvinism. If you're happy all the time, you're not a good person. You're not, you're not working hard and toiling and being and you're not sacrificing for God and for your family and your country. And it comes from there. Something's wrong. I was married to a woman, my first wife, for nine years, who, and a lot of people are like this. Who believe that if you're happy, you're you're kind of you're being kind of an asshole, because the point of life is to be happy. That's after you die and go to heaven. Then your God will reward you with happiness. But this life is to toil and suffer and sacrifice for your children, and your country, and your family, you know, and your fellow man and whatever. Okay, it's always different for a person. Is to toil and suffer and to work, knows the grindstone, and then you die. Then you be happy. Okay. So if you're happy now, you're kind of fucking up that system. You're being kind of a selfish asshole. Interestingly, hardcore left-wing people, hardcore woke like environmentalists have the same view. You're walking around happy all the time. Hey, you're people suffering in Africa, you know, what the fuck? It's a kind of a problem. They have kind of a problem with it. Same exact thing. Politics is a circle. If you go too far to the right, you become too far to the left. You go too far to the left, you become a right winger. If a woman listens to videos, you do delete her nudes and any photos you recorded together. Well, no, why? I got plenty of that stuff from lots of girls. Who cares? Or even any normal photos you have. To, why would you delete them? I understand why you would do that. Mine are, you know, encrypted. You can't get them. They're not online. If they're online, that's a little dangerous. I wouldn't keep them online. That's stupid. On a hard drive somewhere? Sure, why not? Keep them. I have pictures of almost, almost every woman I've had sex with. Plus a lot more stuff. With some of them. Sure. You're not going to get it. I'm never going to reveal it. But I've got it. You know. Talk about reactivity. What would you do if you came across a situation where you happen to have no control about? For example, you got robbed in the street. Do you able to think you're keep your calm? If your physical body is being threatened, you have to respond. There's reaction and there's response. If you try to rob me in the street... I'm going to take your head and crack your skull open on the sidewalk. But that's not because I'm mad. It's because you're physically threatening me. That's a whole different scenario. I'm not talking about someone coming at you with a knife or a gun or someone who's trying to rape your girlfriend. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about I said four or five words that make you mad. But even in those scenarios, I have a martial arts background. You, you bet if you come at me, this is just me now. This is this is the testosterone talking. I get kind of excited when I talk about this because I got high testosterone. You come at me physically, you better be my size or bigger and or have a martial arts background. Or else you're going to the hospital. But you have to physically assault me, not say, hey, fuck you, you asshole. I don't care if you say that. Hey, good. Great. That's the difference. Whole different thing. That's a whole different scenario. So yeah, take care of business if someone physically assaults you. Now, if you're a little guy and 10 guys jump you, you do what you can. You get the fetal position, you cover you cover up, you know, you do what you can. Because that, you don't have a lot of control over that, right? Right. It's your son falling alpha male too, put on your dating systems. More or less, but you can ask him. Does the level of testosterone affect sexual orientation as a feeling it was, I was turning the other way? Now my levels have increased and no longer have gay thoughts. I don't think it has anything to do with it, but I'm not an expert in that area. I would be surprised if it did. I don't think so. Um, I don't think so, but maybe Caleb, I fall in love with women easily. Very bad. Very bad. Very dangerous. And the alpha tubido journey is extra painful because of that. So it doesn't seem worth it. You need to ask yourself, why do you fall in love with women very quickly? That is a horrible trait to have. It's something you need to fix. You don't just say, well, that's just the way I am. I have a brother like this and I love him. He's my brother, but he has had so much pain and suffering in his life. 
because he falls with women, falls in love with women almost instantly. Every woman he go, he has sex with, he falls in love and immediately has to move in with them and marry them and because he's in love. That's a detriment. That's a personality flaw you need to work on, alleviate, and or fix. Not just say, well, that's the way I am. I better not do 2.0. Because if you don't do alpha male 2.0, you're going to be still going to be miserable the rest of your life. Women are biologically wired to leave you. If you fall in love with every woman you have sex with, oh, I've read entire articles about this. The problem with the current Libertarian Party, there's a lot of problems with the party, but the main problem with the Libertarian Party is no, everybody hates libertarians, including right-wingers, is that it spends more time and energy hating the government than it does loving and enjoying freedom. Even if the Libertarian Party did everything perfect, it would still get 1% of the vote. Modern-day Westerners hate freedom. Right-wing Trump supporters hate freedom. Left-wing woke people hate freedom. Moderate centrists hate freedom. Everyone hates freedom. It makes people very nervous to just let people do whatever they want. Oh, you can't do that. People hate freedom. So that's why libertarians are always going to be 1% of the vote. How comfortable should you be to take a photo together with MLTR? Go ahead. What about a sexual photo? Go ahead. Be the same guy. It's fine. Looking for image, images of Caleb to enjoy? Yeah, right. <laughs> you say to not have a girlfriend. That's not what I say. What do I say? What do I say about having girlfriends? Never have a girlfriend? I'm married. So clearly I don't say I don't have a girlfriend. I say don't have a girlfriend until you are 30. That's what I say. Yes. So if you're 29 or under, you should not have a girlfriend. If you're 30 or over, go ahead as long as you're careful. I'm getting shame because I don't have a girlfriend. How to be awkward independent? Why do you care about the one or two people shaming you that you don't have a girlfriend? Why do you care about their opinion? You think that would work on me? I didn't have a girlfriend for 10 years. I got all kinds of shame. It didn't work on me at all. I'm like, okay, you're actually more miserable than me. You my women I'm fucking right now? This is what I would say or think. <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> Do you take pics with your FBs? I uh, I have. It's not a normal thing I do. The only time these days I'd take a picture if they want to pick. And I'll say, sure. That's not typical, but I have, sure. What happens if they post them on the internet? What is my response? Don't care. Caleb, what if this? Why would I care? These women are hot. It would make me look great. If any of these women posted pictures of me and them on the internet, I would look so good. I've already talked about this. If I started going around saying the women I've had sex with, including some of the more famous ones, you have any idea how awesome I'd look? I don't do that because I'm not an asshole. I respect other people's privacy. It, look, it would be great branding for me. What should I do if my mission involves being an employee? No. Due to wanting to work in biotechnology. You can't work in biotech as a self-employed person. Yes, you can. I can give you 20 business ideas right now working in biotech. I've worked in biotech. I've worked in biotech. This used to be one of my niches when I was a productivity consultant. We are several biotech firms. Great. I'm self-employed. How do you explain me? <clears throat> my impact on the world is more of a motivator than money or freedom. I know the USA is bad. It doesn't matter whether what your motivator is, you will be less happy if you're an employee because you're not free. You can be self-employed and work in biotech. You have what's called a limiting belief. John Anthony in Lifestyle says he has one way, he has a one-way relationship. Okay. Also playing with fire. You said it does not work. Thoughts. It does not work long term in the Western world unless the woman is making hundreds of thousands of dollars by doing it. So the question is not, but Caleb, this guy's doing it. Lots of guys do it for a while. Check back in three years, two years, five years, and see if A, they're with the same exact woman, B. The woman hasn't fucked anybody. And then they can prove me wrong. But until then, what I said is accurate. It's not going to work in the Western world long term. The longest I've seen it work is about nine months. You could do it and it'll last a while and then it'll end. She'll fuck someone else or break up with you or you'll fuck someone, whatever. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying it doesn't work long term. What's your take on porn and addictions to it? Uh, porn is fine as long as it's done, you know, in moderation. If you're on looking at porn every day, I think that's a problem. That's just my opinion. I don't really, I'm not a porn guy, but I've lost sex. So I, I'm not a porn guy. Um, porn addiction is something you need to fix. I've had a lot of women talk to me about guys they've dated or dating, just jerking off the porn all day. Yeah. Pink Firefly, my wife, 
She had a boyfriend. I've talked about this. She lived with him for a while. She would wake up in the middle of the night and he wasn't in bed. She's like, where the hell is he? So she'd go walk out. He'd be in the kitchen jerking off the porn in the middle of the night. That's a problem. You need to resolve that. How important do you think learning martial arts is for your masculinity and overall confidence? You know, it's not an alpha. Martial arts is not an alpha male 2.0 requirement, but it almost is. It's not. You can be an alpha 2.0 without learning martial arts, but it almost is. It's so useful as a man to build confidence, to understand your body better, to reduce fear, to reduce in many ways outcome independence or outcome dependence, to know for a fact that you can get into a fight and, and take care of yourself. It, it, it breeds a confidence in all the other areas of your life, I think. It really helped me. God damn. So I'm huge proponent of doing some martial arts. And I haven't done it in many years, but I did for a long time. I loved it. And it helped me a lot. My son did MMA for a long time. Yeah. It's not mandatory, but almost. <laughs> but JD, more than one MLTR, and you upgrade to one. Upgrade one to OLTR. How do you drop the other MLTRs FP? You have a very difficult conversation. And they won't like it and they'll cry and they'll get mad at you. And they might and they might leave. You just tell them, look, I look, here's the deal. I got a girlfriend now. I can't see you like this. I can still see you like that, but I can't see you like this. Oh, fuck you. Now, I was lucky when I upgraded o, uh Pink Firefly to OLTR. I just I just got really lucky. I didn't have any MLTRs. I had one who kind of floated away. Like just a few weeks before, I just got lucky. So I didn't have that problem, but I would have had to tell her, hey, sorry. Yeah. Sucks. It's not a fun conversation. You gotta do that. How do you show how do you show overt come outcome independence and unreactivity while showing your OLTR that you still care about her? Will some women feel those are contradictions? Yes, some more emotional women will get the feeling that you don't care about them. I'm married to an extremely emotional woman. So I've had to manage that myself. You overwhelm her with the positive lovey-dovey shit. I have to go out of my way to show my wife that I love her every day. I love you. You're beautiful. Come here. Let's cuddle. I miss you. We talk. I, I mean, we're not. She's in the United States right now. We talk every day, often for an hour, seven days a week. And I try to text her. I'm going to give her a bunch of stuff for Valentine's Day next week, even though Valentine's Day is stupid. You have, to, you have to overwhelm her with that stuff. And if she goes, you don't care about me. You think I don't care when I did this and that and this and that. She goes, oh, that's true. That's what you do. And you'll never, hundred. if you are attracted to very emotional women like I am, very feminine women, you'll never 100% nail it. That's the way it goes. Pink Firefly and I are, are extreme opposites to each other, so I have a unique challenge in that respect. But very cool. The number one reason for divorce in the USA is money. According to statistics, thoughts. There's conflicting on this, but yes, that's the one, number one or number two reason. Yes, correct. The problem is if you make a lot of money, your wife will divorce you also. Robert Kiyosaki. I just saw a little clip of him on Instagram and a few, like last week. Those of you who don't know, Robert Kiyosaki got divorced about four years ago. He kept it quiet for a while, okay? His wife, Kim, is a big component of his business, right? And he was talking about, someone said, what's the worst thing you've had in your life? My wife left me. And, he, and Robert Kiyosaki said something very interesting, something I've already said many times, but it's, it's nice to hear it from the people. He said, when marriage works is when you're in survival mode. You're both reasonably young and you need each other. She needs you or you have little kids and she needs your income to raise those kids. He said, and he said it exactly the way I've said it. As soon as she doesn't need you anymore, she's out the door. Yes, correct. <laughs> as soon as the kids grow up and move out and she's got her own money, she's out the fucking door. Robert Kiyosaki is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So if you don't have enough money, you'll get divorced. If you have a lot of money, you'll probably get divorced eventually. My mom left my dad. My dad was a low-end millionaire by the time he was, you know, in his 60s or whatever. Um, my mom left my dad in her 70s. Yeah. So it's not that they have any money. They weren't rich, but they had some, they had some, but you see my point. So long-term monogamy doesn't work. How is ad revenue on alt tech sites? I don't know anything about that. I, I wouldn't bother with it. What should I do if my mission involves being up? Oh, you already asked that. 
Shaking my head, how big of a pussy do you have to be to get a girlfriend just to impress your beta ass pussy friends that are probably stuck in a relationship with some three, four girl? Right. How long did it take to learn and master your emotion to become non reactive like today? Would one to three years of serious work? It depends on how reactive you are. If you're not that reactive, it might be a year. If you're super fucking reactive, it might take you five years. Depends on how reactive you are. I don't know. That's a good question. Um, don't really answer that question, but it's how reactive are you now? Um, Bradicus uploaded a video while he was there said that New Zealand, there are lots of Latino women. Should I travel to New Zealand to find Latino women to Australia to game some Aussie women? Never travel. No, I would not do that. And I don't believe that either. I've been I've been in New Zealand several times. I didn't see like two women there. Response: Caleb, my work is in a lab, and I must be in person to run experiments and design hardware for my projects. You can do that as a self-employed business owner if you wish. I still said my mission is not location-dependent business unless I open my own lab, etc. You will never be long-term happy if you have to report to a job. What if you get laid off? What if your boss is an asshole? What if your company goes out of business? What if you have to take a 50% pay cut? Then what? You, you can't control your own destiny when you have a job. doesn't matter what your objective is in life. Figure out how to, you can do that in your own business. Have women ever questioned you after lock-in that you don't seem as keen because you're not meshing them as much? No, that has literally never happened. You're fantasizing about things that have never happened. Just do it and you'll see. Eastern, Eastern European, European country get laid in. There isn't one. There's probably several. And I am not the expert to ask that. There's a few. I mean, I know Romania is pretty easy. Um, some guys, well, Ukraine's not that easy because they're very traditional in Ukraine. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. But there isn't one. There's probably three or four. I mean, I don't even know off the top of my head. It wouldn't be Latvia. I don't know. Good question. If you have a boss and you can't leave your job, if you have a boss and can't leave your job, you can always leave your job. Can't is a false word. You could leave your job tomorrow if you want. But your boss keeps on disrespecting you. Are you the same guy who asked that you have to have a job? Hang on, I got to scroll up. Or not. Maybe you aren't. Okay, you're not. All right, good. I was going to bring you a new asshole. Okay. If you have a boss, you can't leave your job. False, you leave your job. But your boss keep on disrespecting you in front of everybody. What should you do? You start looking for a new job. Why are you putting up with this behavior? You start looking for a new job. When you've got some new job prospects, which might take a few weeks, you go to your boss, you give him an ultimatum. You will not treat me like this anymore, period. If you do, I'm out of here. And you got my two weeks notice. So how would you like to handle this, boss? And you listen to what he says. If he says, fuck you, then you quit. He says, oh, shit, okay. You can even say, by the way, I want a 30% raise. I'm out of here. You say, if you have a lot of balls. Good broadcast. You're welcome. As an alpha male 2.0, do you control the frame with women? Yes. If they are annoying or testing you, I mean in a calm way. Uh, if they're testing you, I pass their tests with alchemy dependence. That's easy. If they're annoying you, um, well, if they're annoying you, then you just, you make a judgment call. You say, look, you can do whatever you want. Here's my here's the standard thing the alpha male 2.0 says to a woman doing something he doesn't like. The beta male who's pissed off or the alpha male 1.0 says, you will stop doing that. Don't do that. Don't say that in front of me. Don't say, don't say that to me. Don't do that. Don't say this. Don't say that. Okay. The alpha male 2.0 doesn't tell people what to do. The alpha male 2.0 says, you can do whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. But I have a limited amount of time in my day. I have to make a judgment call on who I spend my time with. So if you want to keep doing that, that's fine, but I'm probably going to spend less time with you and more time with other people. Wink, wink, other women. That's it. Where are you now? I'm in Dubai at home. Thoughts on Bosnia as a flag? Depends what kinds of flag. Many people say that if you are plus 28 and bang 18 and 19 year olds, that you are a creep or a weirdo. Not many people, some people, we don't care what they think. What do you think of this, even other men? Oh, why do they think this? even other men. Well, the women say that because they're over 33 and women hate younger women because it's competition. Women over 33 hate women in their early 20s, late teens. They hate those. 
they're all whores and sluts and dumbasses. And that's why women say it. Men say it because they're jealous. And I'm not joking. I'm not making a joke about that. They, they're, they're fucking jealous. I've had that scenario where I'm, I'm dating a 19 year old or whatever, or 24 year old or whatever, when I was in my thirties or forties. And, you know, some guy who's 45 married to a fat 46 year old wife sees me with some smoking hot 20 year old girl, you know, you shouldn't do that. Well, of course you think that bitch. New Zealand girls, some of the ugliest girls I've seen used to live there. Great country, but horrific. I will be honest. They're not ugly, but they're not attractive. Yes. New Zealand for women is a problem. I, you know, I forgot to mention that the other guy. You're right. Every time I've been to New Zealand, I'm like, where are all the hot girls? I, I haven't seen one. I've been here for a week. Yeah, that, that is true. Really cool people. They're cool people. Love the Australians and New Zealanders. But New Zealand for hot girls, yeah, that's a problem. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Because I was looking at New Zealand many years ago, possibly moving there. This is a long time ago. And I'm like, you know, if I lived here, this, you know, this would be a problem. <laughs> I only need one or two girls, but still. At the end of the day, what do you say if the woman asks you to drop her off? That's okay. That's all right. As long as it's not too far away. That's okay. I'll do it. Is there a way to be possessive with your OLTR? You can be, you can break the rules and fuck up and be possessive. You shouldn't. You shouldn't care what your OLTR does. But yeah, you can be jealous. Some women need that almost alpha and one possessiveness to feel secure. If they need that level of possessiveness, that sh she should not be your OLTR. That's not a quality. That's not an OLTR candidate. She does not qualify for OLTR. Hyper needy women should be FBs or low end MLTRs. Never an OLTR. You got the wrong girlfriend in that case. Plus one on Ben's question. What I just said. I'm going to say it again. If you've got a girlfriend who requires you to be super, super possessive with her and act super jealous all the time, you got the wrong girlfriend. You fucked this up. Women have to qualify for OLTR. You don't just give a woman OLTR because she's nice. They have to qualify. She can't be super jealous. She can't be demanding of certain behaviors of you. And if she's like that, sorry, it's MLTR, low in LTR or FB. You think I would have married Pink Firefly if she was that demanding? You think I would have got made her my girlfriend? No. Fuck no. Would you say Ukrainian women are a good alternative to Russian women less crazy? Yes, I would say that. Uh, Ukrainian women are Russian women light. So there's a definite difference between Ukrainian women and Russian women. One of my main FBs is Ukrainian, which is kind of on the edge of Russian, but she's a sweetheart. And yes. So yeah. Yep. 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 I would say that. I was going to go to Ukraine. What do you think about me in Ukraine? I was going to go. I had a flight booked. It's going to spend a, a month, three weeks in Kiev, Ukraine. Back when they used to call it Kiev. Now they call it Kiev. I don't know what changed. In early 2020. What happened in 2020? Pandemic. So I had to cancel my flight. I'm like, oh, I can't go. So then the pandemic's over, and then they have the war. I'm like, oh, I, I'll never get to Ukraine now. <laughs> you can go to the Ukraine now. People here in Dubai, when they go to Ukraine, they go visit their families. They fly into uh, Poland. Do they fly to Warsaw? You, you Europeans can correct me if I'm right. I believe they fly into Warsaw, but they fly into Poland. They then take a train for like, 15 hours into Ukraine. You can't fly into Ukraine. You get shot down. So they take the train in there. And that's how they visit their family. They go to the train back out and fly back out. It's a big pain in the ass. Yeah. <clears throat> how much of a beta pussy do you have to be to, to give a fuck about other guys you're not trying to you're not trying to fuck caring about wanting you to bang 18 year old quit being a pussy. You're talking to another guy. Okay, yeah. Right, you shouldn't care. If you live the alpha male 2.0 lifestyle, you're going to look, I've said this 10,000 times. I said this in my books. If you live the alpha male 2.0 lifestyle, you will be the happiest guy in the room, but most people, or at least the plurality of people in the room are going to think you're weird or inappropriate. And you're going to get negative feedback. And societal validation is not something you're going to get a lot of. It's an alpha male 2.0. If it's really important to be societally validated because you're a big outcome dependent guy, then go be a beta and date someone your age and go get monogamously married and have 2.3 kids and have a nine to five job because you see you can't quit and be miserable the rest of your life. It's fine. 
When you say being non-reactive, do you actually feel reactive, pissed off inside, and just suppress it <clears throat> and appear chill in front of other people? Or are you really not pissed off at all that inside? Are you talking about me or what the objective is? For me, I'm not pissed off. No. That's suppressing anger. That's that's not good. Now, so no, if you called me a wop or you called me fat or insulted my wife, I don't care. Okay, cool. I not feel I wouldn't feel a thing. But if you're a reactive guy and you're practicing what we're talking about, then yes, you're gonna have to go inside you're like a, and you're just out outwardly, you're calm, relaxed. Okay, yeah, whatever. And you turn around and you leave. And over time, you practice reacting that way and you'll start reacting that way. It'll get easier and easier. So initially, if you're a reactive guy, you will have to fake it until you make it. As I say in my books, fake it till you make it does work. That is a valid model. Fake it till you make it. Fake it till it's real. It's a way of building confidence. Pretend to be confident, act confident. Act like James Bond when you're feeling really nervous inside. If you're acting like James Bond outwardly, you'll start feeling more confident. Tony Robbins talks about this. How motion creates emotion. That's a big Tony Robbins thing. True. You want to be in a better mood? Stand up right now, smile as big as you can, and look up at the ceiling and laugh. It feels funny, but you'll feel a little better because your body is doing something to make you happy. Are you part of the Mile High Club? You know, I'm not. Technically, I'm not. Um, I'm a big guy. I can barely fit in those bathrooms at, by myself. I'm going to bring some chick in the bathroom with me. My God. Even if she was a tiny Asian girl, because there have been a few of those. That'd be, how would you? How would that work? I mean, all right, put your ass up on the sink and, you know, what do you, or no, kid, go in the back of the plane. You have a blanket. Um, yeah, you can do that on transatlantic flights where they turn off all the lights. Um, but no, I have done sexual things on airplanes. Yes, absolutely. Quite a bit. But I've not had sex on a plane as of yet. And that's not even on a, on my goal list. So probably something I don't care about, but I've done sexual shit. Yeah. If Pink Firefly's sitting next to me on a plane, I'm grabbing her titties, like, like a lot. Oh, yeah. But having sex, she now, other women, maybe, but Pink Firefly, she, she'd be so terrified. Oh, no. Well, well th- people get arrested, and they'll land the flight, and you'll go to jail. And, you know, she's one of those. <laughs> Why do you think a lot of Western women hate the passport, bro? I don't think Western women hate the passport. I don't think Western women care. I think you just heard that once or twice. They call them creepy and say we manipulate women overseas. Why do you care what they think? Shouldn't care. And, and it's probably because competition again. This is why white girls, a lot of white women have a problem with Asian women. Why? Competition. Competition. I've seen some like female stand-up comics talk about this. White female stand like, you know, I see an Asian girl, I'm like, I oh my God, I can't even compete with that. How do we even, oh, I, I lose. How do we even compete with that? With the cute little feminine Asian girl who likes to clean your house goes, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right, a few more questions and I got to go. Um, let's see here. How compatible is Stoic philosophy with alpha male 2.0? It's hand and glove. Stoicism is hand and glove with 2.0. I'm not a stoicism guy, but Marcus Aurelius knew what he was talking about. Yeah. Have you read any book on stoicism personally? Ryan Holiday. Uh, no, I've watched a lot of Ryan Holiday videos. I like what he has to say. Um, I've read Marcus Aurelius's book. Um, that's about it. But I developed Alpha Male 2.0 years before I even knew stoicism was a thing. Is sharing and showing pictures of women to men or online groups a dumb thing now to do in the Western world? Why would it be a dumb thing? I don't understand. The, I don't understand the premise of the question. Is Paraguay a good country to find girlfriend material? I've heard women there don't party too much and are bored because it's boring out there. What's wrong with a woman who parties? <laughs> you shouldn't care. Who cares if she parties? As long as, she doesn't, as long as she's nice to you. Um, Paraguay. Yes, but but that applies to lots of South America. Lots of South, lots of the low end South America outside the big cities have women who are like Paraguayans who have nothing to do all day. Yeah. Now here's the thing about Paraguay. They're not smoking hot in Paraguay. They're not. That would be Colombia and Venezuela. Okay. You want smoking hot? Go to Colombia. You don't want to go to Paraguay if you want smoking hot girls. They're cute. 
and they have giant, giant, giant asses. If you like big asses like me, you're in paradise there. But they're not hot. They're just cute. They're cutie. They're sweetie pies. Um, and they're Latinas, so be aware of this. Latinas are a little fiery. Now, they're the more relaxed Latinas. You could, you could say Argentinian women are like that, too. So, there you go. Isn't that a felony? Yeah, that's what Pink Firefly says. Banging girls in a bathroom. Having sex on a plane is a felony, I believe, yeah. Welcome to the land of the free United States. It's great. How far out can I see FB's NLTR so I lose him? Is every seven days minimum, or can I make it work every 10 days or so? What's the max? Six weeks is the max. Six weeks is the working maximum on average. Um... Okay, you're talking to someone else. Okay. How do you kick FBs out of your house as fast as possible after the deed is done? So much waste of time otherwise. Here's the technique. As soon as she comes over, you set the time expectation. So she comes over at 9 p.m. You immediately look. When she walks in the door, you start talking. You look at your watch or your phone, and you say, so I got to go to sleep by 1030. Is that okay? Or whatever time, if you want one hour, you say 10. Hour and a half, 10.30. And you say, is that okay? And she goes, oh, yeah, sure. Now she knows 10.30, she has to leave. And now it's not awkward. That's you do it. You're welcome. The hottest Venezuelan girls are in Colombia, USA, and Spain now. They're not in Venezuela anymore. Uh, Wait. Wait till Venezuela calms down and all those young 16, 17, 8 year old smoking hot tens will still be there. Every 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 year you got a new giant assembly line of new women, right? Plus, I think you're exaggerating. The tens, the, the, the ultra tens are probably in other countries, sure. But I'm sure if you went to Venezuela right now and spent three weeks there, I'm sure be plenty of hot chicks. I wouldn't do that right now, but if you did, I'm sure you'd be fine. Why is being reactive about positive thing a bad thing? I don't understand. Oh, because when you are hyper reactive to something little, but you think it's great, that's indicative of a reactive personality. So if I say, hey, that's a nice shirt, and you go, oh my God, and you think it's just wonderful and it changes your life, okay, that might mean you have a reactive personality. You think Trump being elected? is going to change the world and make your life perfect now, which millions of men in the United States did in 2016. It's indicative you might have a reactive personality. That's why. It's not necessarily a bad thing in and of itself. It's indicative of other problems. I probably didn't make that clear. Enough. <clears throat> do you think Venezuela could be a good flag in the next 10 years? Yes, I do think this. Yes. Post-war, post-problem countries especially for financial flags and investing flags are awesome. I promise you when the war in Ukraine is over, I'm going there like the next day. I'm exaggerating. I'm going there ASAP and I'm investing in some same thing with Venezuela. As soon as Venezuela cleans up their act and gets back to normalcy, I'm going over there for business investment, financial purposes, not to get laid. And if I get laid there, sure. It's always on the side. So, yeah, I, I do believe that. I think odds are fantastic. Venezuela's going to be a great place to either invest or spend time in. You could go to Venezuela as a partial living flag. It'd be super cheap. Who's going to want to move to Venezuela? See my point? Who's going to want to go to move to Ukraine after this? It's going to be so fucking cheap in these countries. Jim Rogers, one of my mentors, has said numerous times, one of the few guaranteed ways to make money in investing is you invest in a country right after a war. He goes, it's about 100% guaranteed you're going to make a lot of money. He goes, it's one of the few scenarios you have. So, dude, invest in Ukraine. As soon as, as soon as Putin pulls out of there, get over there and start investing. Buy something. Buy some apartments. Do something. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something. Don't you think you'll become an emotionless individual? Do I look like an emotionless individual? You seem like a highly animated, expressive person. Right. 
So being low motion works. Low motion doesn't mean zero motion. Yes, I am a I am a low low end emotional person. I'm an animated person, yes. But I am, trust me, I am the low end of the emotional scale. When horrible things happen, I go, that sucks. When amazing things happen, I go, cool. I'm not super emotional. When I fall in love with a woman, I go, all right. <laughs> you want to see emotion, watch any of the pink firefly videos I have on this channel, on the Alphamel Tupelo YouTube channel. Watch how she moves, talks, reacts, answers questions. That's a high emotion person. Watch me. I'm I'm steady throughout the entire hour and a half. She's all over the place, right? Because she's very emotional. So that's the difference. What to say? All right. Uh, how am I doing on time? All right. A few more minutes. Um, you guys have a lot of questions. What to say when FBs tell me I just want to have sex from them? Seeing them once a week for one or two hours at a time. Uh, depends on the FB. It depends on the scenario. So it's hard for me to tell you exactly what to say because every woman's different. I like spending time with you. Do you like spending time with me? Just say it like that. Turn back around on her. I like spending time with you. If I didn't like spending time with you, I wouldn't see you. Which, by the way, in my case, is true. If she's a total bitch, total cunt, I'm not going to have an FB who's a bit to me. I'm not going to have an FB like that. So it's true. I like spending time with you. Well, then why do we go on dates? I don't have time. That's not where I'm in my life right now. Don't lie. Okay. Let's see, do it. And why is she saying this? You're doing something. You're treating her too much like a whore, possibly. You're fucking her and then kicking her out. You might need to talk to your FBs a little longer. When my FBs come over, sugar daddy or normal FBs, it doesn't matter. It's not like they run in, I bang them, I kick them out. No, we talk for a while. Pink Firefly was an FB. That's how I met her. And we got married. Now, why? Because we would talk. Talk for a while. Usually before sex, a little after sex. We talk. FBs, the F is for F, the F in FB stands for friend. You talk. You should have an interest. I love my FBs. They're great people. I really like them a lot. Do I love them? No. But I like them a lot. Really cool, especially ones I have now in various countries. I have a really good set. They're really cool people, just special people. They're great. I like talking to them. Am I going to talk to them for six hours? No. Plus, I'm married. That's not cool. By the way, my wife doesn't like the fact that sometimes I got to talk to my MPs a little bit. She doesn't like it. But, so be aware of that. It might be on you. You might be behaving in a certain way that's setting off those questions. As a woman, in my opinion, men who have mental issues who go to other countries to manipulate unsuspecting women is the problem. You know, the bitter ones who hate women. If you just like traveling and have a racial preference, it's no big deal. Well, I, yeah, if I agree with you, if they're manipulating women. So a core part of what I talk about is you don't lie to women. You can't lie. So if you can't lie, how are you manipulating them? Now, if you are lying, if you are lying to women in other countries, the same way I talk about you shouldn't impregnate a bunch of women in other countries just because you can. That's pretty shitty. It should be shitty to anybody. So I agree with you. Your response video on Brittany Renner is your most underrated one. Love it. Yeah, you know, my son, I don't know if he's still on live stream, has told me many times I should do more of those. <laughs> and I probably should. But, but that video was so perfect. It was so indicative of a lot of what a lot of females think about dating and relationships. And it was like, it was perfect. I'm like, oh my God, everything she's saying is factually inaccurate. And she strongly believes it emotionally. I can't wait to respond to this. So yes. But that's one of the reasons that's one of the few videos I've done. Most videos that women talk about aren't that crazy. <laughs> and I've done some videos where I agree with women. I just did a video a while back what, December? Where I was agreeing with a bunch of women? Yeah. Well. Do you still have an online community where people can chat? Yes, the Alpha Male 2.0 Facebook group, the Alpha Male 2.0 Telegram group. Yes, it's probably in the description of this video. True, I remember people in Croatia invested in Seacoast real estate after the 90s war. Oh, yeah. 10x, 20x return by today. Fuck yeah, man. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Which relationship goal setting did you choose on Tinder? Long-term partner. So let's see. Long-term partner, but open. Short-term, but open to long. That one. Short-term, but open to long. Have you tested your online game system in Western Europe? Yes, I certainly have. It works great. Or is it suited only for English-speaking cultures besides UK? No, there are guys who've used my system in Asia, Germany, France, parts of Africa, South America. They don't speak English there. It has nothing to do with what language you speak. There are some places it doesn't work as well, but it has nothing to do with English. What is the fastest way to go from living at home to getting an international backup plan for the location dependent business? What is the fastest way to go? Well, there's those are two things. International backup plan and having your own location are two completely different things. You could have a location dependent business up and running, making money in 90 days, 90 day business builder, 90 day biz builder.com. There you go. You could do that in a few months if you hit it hard and you focus and you do the right things. International backup plan that might take you about mm, depends on how much how much time you're willing to spend in the country. If you're willing to spend a decent amount of time in the country, you can do that within six months. Otherwise, about a year. All right, let's do one or two more questions, and then I got to go. What do you think of setting dates straight to your place from online game? Many guys do. It saves so much time. Uh, if you are if you are relative, first of all, I don't teach that model because most women aren't going to do that. Agree. Uh, let me back up. The vast majority of women are not going to go to your place on the very first date. Some will, especially the much younger ones. Yes, the vast majority are, aren't. And I teach a system that works with all women, not just a little tiny segment of very low ASD young girls. That's a segment. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, what if she comes over, you try to hook up and nothing happens and she gets nervous and a bunch of ASD spikes. That's the other problem. So that's why I don't teach that. If you want to, sure, go ahead. Have I ever done it? Yes, but that's an exceptional rule. All right, I'm going to let you guys go. <clears throat> my voice is uh, getting up. I got to go to night-night soon because I need my seven, eight hours of sleep. I walk my talk on the stuff. I will see you guys next Monday. Is that right? Yes, for the Sovereign CEO live stream, which I don't think is up yet, but if it's not up, it'll be up there shortly. Cool? Cool. All right.